okay, look, we've got the CPI and the PPI report coming out this week that's going to give the Fed a lot of very much needed economic data. So I want to start you on the rate cut question. I know you think one or two before the end of the year. Do we get one before the election? Yeah, I think we do. I think September seems about right. You know, we have about three inflation numbers that are going to come out. Uh, till then, we, you know, this week, we should see moderation in that inflation number, something like 3.4 and 3.1 percent on the core. Um, and the PPI has been low for a while now. You know, we've basically been importing uh, China's deflation. Uh, you, know, pr you know, prices have been very low there. Goods, we're still not really spending on goods, so prices have been coming down there as well. So I think bottom line is an employment ticked up last month to 4.1 percent. So I think for all those reasons and political reasons, uh, I think those real estate uh, lobbyists and private equity lo lobbyists would love to see a rate cut. You're going to see a rate cut probably by September. All right. So you, if you get that kind of Fed rate cut schedule, I think that's pretty aggressive. You're saying this is your Led Zeppelin reference of the day. The levy breaks the cash <laughs> that was sitting in bonds. Rates are coming down, moving into the market. That sounds like market moves up to me. I like that. If I'm an investor, I want to get in on that. But you see risks there. Yeah, it's kind of a double edged sword because and thank you for the 70s rock and roll reference. I love Led Zeppelin. But yeah, which yeah, I did come up with. But yeah, basically <laughs> um, what you're going to see here is you have you saw 50 billion go into money market funds this last week. You have $6.1 trillion mm -hmm. in money market funds. So you have a group over here is extremely aggressive investing in like NVIDIA, AI companies, you know, make cap tech. But you have this other cohort over here is just getting that 5% sitting in a money market fund, right. thinking they're very safe. But the problem is if the Fed cuts, that money market rate goes down, and then where's money going to go? And human behavior really hasn't changed in my lifetime. And I think what you'll see here is a lot of FOMO. Uh, if you're missing out, you're going to see a lot of that money come Even more back FOMO. Because you, you could argue it's kind of a FOMO market right now, but it's going to amp up with rate cuts. Bingo, right? I already think we're in some sort of a melt-up right okay. now, right? You're seeing insane moves from the Magnificent Seven. Um, even just buying the S&P 500 now, it's a tech fund and drag, right? You're really just getting exposure to a couple of mega cap it's names. Drag. No, it's pretty good. Pretty good. <laughs> um, so I think it's just going to exacerbate that move. So you get a melt up, and after a melt up, you typically get a melt okay. down. Okay. So I think allocating your capital wisely here is pretty critical. Unofficial kickoff to earnings season this week with the big banks starting to kick it off later um, in the week. Ultimately, if you want to be two steps ahead, which you're saying that we should be, and you think that we're going to see possibly a rate cut in September, then how should we be allocating? Well, I think we have to think about here is the Magnificent Seven obviously had this huge move. It's no secret. We know semiconductor stocks are the place to be. Um, but if you look at everything else that's not tech right now, it trades at a reasonable valuation. You're getting great dividend yields, whether you're talking about utilities, materials, financials, extra up 20 percent this year. There's a lot of places to allocate your capital. So what I would look at right here is earnings are going to start to accelerate for a lot of other sectors besides tech and semiconductors. In fact, healthcare stocks are going to be up like 17 percent this quarter. That's mm -hmm. the estimate. Um, so I would start to diversify your money heavily outside of tech because, again, you don't want to get caught up in a huge melt up and then a meltdown. And unfortunately, my crystal ball broke like 24 <laughs> years ago. So I can't time these things well. But what we learned from the tech bubble is it's better to be early than late. And I'd argue right now a lot of my clients are baby boomers. You need income right now. There's plenty of places to put your money in. The median stock right now in the S&P 500 only trains for 17 times forward earnings. Uh, where you're like 30 times forward earnings on that Magnificent uh, Seven. Right. Mm. So a lot of great value out there. You just have to allocate accordingly. You're sounding yeah. so reasonable. You know, I'm sorry. I wanted to say something more provocative, <laughs> but I just couldn't come up with it. This no, morning. I was taking notes, Ryan. I, I, listen, so basically you're saying September rate cut, then you're going to have the FOMO, but don't put your money in tech, put it in materials and utilities. That was my takeaway. I, mean, I love it. Call it his stairway to heaven investment. <laughs> <laughs> stairway to heaven from Ryan Page. Stairway Thanks so much for joining us today. Thanks, we appreciate guys. it. Great to see you. Thanks. Thanks.